If you saw my last video, then you already know that I've been working on building an ECS in Go. I wanted to test how my ECS does in a real-world situation and see how it compares to other implementations of the same logic. First, let's come up with a benchmark. Physics is something I haven't made a video about, so let's build a really simple physics simulation. We'll have a bunch of circles bouncing around on the screen. Let's make them random sizes, and if they collide with each other too many times, we'll delete them. For every circle we delete, we'll spawn a new circle. That way we'll have a relatively constant number of circles during the benchmark. We can break this benchmark up into three loops that need to run. First, we need to move the circles. Second, we check collisions between circles, deleting the ones with too many collisions. Third and finally, we spawn new circles randomly. This will test the ECS's ability to keep its arrays tightly packed when the entities are being moved, deleted, and added. As a side note, this won't test the ECS's performance when individual components are being added or removed. We'll have to save that experiment for another day. Now that we have a benchmark, we just need to code it multiple times and compare. I wanted a clickbait headline like Go vs Rust, so I guess we'll have to compare my ECS against the popular Rust ECS Bevy. Let's start coding. Alright, now that I've read about 200 pages on how to write Rust programs, let's try that again. Rust is a really interesting language and I'm excited to learn more about it, but I spent way more time than I care to admit playing around with the borrow checker. I was also able to get some very useful insights from chat. Turns out that we did pretty poorly. At 10,000 entities bubbling around, we took about 35 milliseconds per frame, whereas Bevy took 18 milliseconds, almost twice as slow. Let's see if we can catch up a bit. First, let's establish an optimization target. The fastest way to iterate over an array is in a for loop. If we give each circle infinite health so that they're never deleted, we can measure the native performance of the system. This should be pretty close to our max speed. I'm going to call this the native performance. As you can tell from the native benchmark, my Go code ran faster than my Rust code. I'll let you read into this result as much as you want, but one thing to keep in mind is that I'm much better at programming the Go way than I am the Rust way. So a small performance penalty caused by that makes sense to me. I'm going to assume a more competent Rust programmer could match my Go benchmark, so I'll reduce the native performance floor to a single yellow line. The good news is that we have a lot of room for improvement. The bad news is that we're going to have to open up the assembly. I hope you brought your x86 reference manual. I don't do this very much, so I'm just going to dump the ASM into a text file and view it that way. I'm sure there's better ways to view assembly, but I definitely don't know them. It took a lot of assembly reading, but I was able to find one interesting thing. Because Go is a memory safe language, it does array bounds checking on every index operation. This is a good thing for safety, as it won't let our program read or write memory addresses that are outside the bounds of our array. But performance-wise, it does cause some impact, especially in situations where we have to loop an enormous amount of times. After some research, I was able to find a good blog post about bounds check elimination in Go, which describes some techniques that hint to the Go compiler that some bounds checks are unnecessary. In my case, I have several arrays that are all the same length and I need to iterate over all of them. Because my for loop only specifies one array, what we can do is add a pre-check which verifies that all of the arrays are the same length. After that pre-check, the compiler will know that all arrays are the same length and won't do any bounds checking inside our for loop. Go has a nice command to detect where bounds checks are able to be eliminated. Here's the new result with our bounds check elimination changes implemented. The next performance improvement I actually discovered by accident. While refactoring, I moved a small segment of code into its own function, which ended up making my benchmarks run a lot slower. The reason? Inlining. After the code was moved to its own function, I had to rely on the Go compiler to inline it. Unfortunately, the function was a bit too complex, and Go will only inline simple functions. More specifically, only small functions with no closures and no defer, recover, or select statements can be inlined. Here's a helpful command to check which functions the Go compiler will try to inline. Because my ECS code is written as a map method, where a callback function is passed in to be executed on every index of the array, inlining becomes very challenging. I think I'll have to switch over to for loop based iterators to get my next performance jump. In other languages, writing iterators is fairly common. But from what I've seen in Go, there exists no good way to do it. Even with generics, I've been struggling to come up with a good way to build an iterator. It turns out that Go uses what's called GC shape stenciling for its generics implementation. How it works is fairly simple. For every unique type that needs to be passed into a function, Go will box that type, send it to the function, and then unbox it. With the unboxed value, the generic code can now be executed. This is stenciled based on the GC shape of the underlying type, so things that are type aliases will share the same GC shape, causing them to share the same set of generic functions. The other end of the spectrum is monomorphization, which you can think of as simply copy-pasting the original function for every type implementation needed. Monomorphization leads to slower compile times because of the extra pasting, but also leads to faster execution times because the monomorphized functions are easier to inline and don't contain the overhead of GC shape boxing. I'll leave an article in the description for a more detailed explanation. After a ton of experiments, the best iterator I could come up with, without sacrificing performance, was to simply leak the underlying dataset to the user in the form of a slice so that they could iterate over it in a for loop. It's pretty nasty looking, but here it is. On the bright side though, it comes with an impressive performance boost. Overall, we actually came pretty close to our goal of near-native performance. 
I think if Go provided a way to implement native performance iterators, I'd actually be pretty happy with this result. Up until now, we've been using circles with infinite health, so nothing gets deleted. Let's do a final comparison of my Go ECS versus Bevy, and we'll do it with differing amounts of collision health. We can also see how it scales by bumping up the entity count. I hope you enjoyed this little experiment I ran. Though not fully featured yet, I'm fairly happy with how my ECS library is turning out. There's obviously still some room for improvement, but Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither was my library.